the hunger that fills this vessel. It is power, but it consumes without end. He will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. What was the terrible curse for those who wore Darth Nihilus's mask? Which is perhaps why the player can never equip it for their own safety in Knights of the Old Republic 2. The less said of that one, the better. Even a stray thought may draw him, and it is possible that he cannot be defeated. Perhaps the most enigmatic villain in KOTOR 2, Darth Nihilus cut a menacing figure, and although he could not be understood via his archaic Sith tongue or any discernible emotion behind his foreboding mask, the danger of his primal, unrelenting hunger was suffocating to all unfortunate enough to be in his presence. His power is great, and it comes from hunger. He is a wound in the Force more presence than flesh, and in his wake, life dies, sacrificing itself to his hunger. But how do you obtain the Sith's iconic mask? Upon defeating the Lord of Hunger on the Ravager's Bridge, you can command Visus, if you did not demand her to sacrifice herself, to retrieve Nihilus's mask from his fallen form. With the Force and my eyes. What the hell are you doing up there? We need to get off this ship, now! Upon doing so, you will receive the somewhat rare achievement, Finders Keepers, which only 9.3% of Steam users have discovered. Inside your inventory, you can then find the mask is unequippable. However, its flavor text reads, You have taken this trophy from the remains of Darth Nihilus. It is the last surviving piece of the beast who died and was reborn in the shattered world of Malachor V. By taking it from him, you have gained a stronger tie to the Force. And, unbeknownst to the player, your maximum force points increased by 20. So the mask cannot be equipped in game, and for good reason, as we will discuss the dangers attached soon. However, first, we must understand how the mask became cursed in the first place. Although Nihilus was once a man, as Visus confirmed post his defeat. A man, nothing more. You are my master now, and I will follow wherever your path takes you, my path is at an end. After surviving the destruction of the mass shadow generator on Malachor V as the Exile did, Nihilus, having lost everything and one dear to him, became consumed by a void or hunger. And although the dates are somewhat contested, sometime between 3960 BBY and 3952 BBY, the ravages of this insatiable dark hunger for the Force destroyed Darth Nihilus' physical body to the point where he was compelled to bind his life force into his robes and armor, including a facial mask, in order to avoid death and give himself a palpable form which would allow him to wield a lightsaber and continue his mastery of the Force. Nihilus then became inexorably linked with his mask and armor as his hunger consumed his flesh, and as more of his physical body gave way, he would become more wraith than man. In fact, I stumbled across an old tweet I shared letting Chris Avalone know that Nihilus was a part of Galaxy of Heroes and his new design, which he took umbrage with that they showed him as a man under the robes versus a spirit. <laughs> As a quick aside and fun fact, if Nihilus' mask seems familiar, it's because his visual design inspiration was being confirmed to have been created by Obsidian artist Brian Menz, in which he was asked to create a mask based on No Face, a character from the Hayao Miyazaki's Spirited Away film, and it was highly derivative from that. <laughs> Going a step deeper, I found the mask's intended lore background makes sense, but was actually removed as when working on the Knights of the Old Republic campaign guide, Star Wars author Abel G. Pena wrote a whole passage devoted to Nihilus' mask that was ultimately cut. In the last paragraph of Nihilus' section, it would have mentioned that the mask may have been a death mask of Hender 9 make. Those masks first appeared in the New Rebellion series and seen on the iconic villain Kula, who acquired a death mask from the Henandines. The Henandines were a species known for the elaborate death masks they created. 
These masks were unique in that they established a mental link with the wearer and preserved the wearer's memories. When a Henendine died, the mask was removed and the memories were used by future generations. A feature that would be, no doubt, a boon between familial warriors, but unfortunately, an echo of the death mask law remained with Nihilus's own mask, but not his memories. Instead, the all-consuming hunger of the dark side. Which then begs the unfortunate question, what happened to the mask when it left the exile stewardship? And more importantly, what would happen to someone if they accidentally wore the Lord of Hunger's mask? The extent of his power cannot be put into words, and his perceptions have grown as well. To him, you are dust motes in a storm, a grain upon the beach, and as insignificant as a body that orbits the graveyard of Malakor. According to The Mask of Darth Nihilus, a mini-adventure published in the Unknown Region sourcebook, for the next 4,000 years, rumors spread across the galaxy concerning The Mask's power. A group of heroes had followed leads to discover that the location of The Mask of Darth Nihilus, an ancient Sith artifact, was on the planet Volik in the Unknown Regions. Upon reaching Volik, the heroes discover The Mask is located in the wreckage of a dynamic class freighter, the Nashuaga in a cove that was part of the base of operations for the Wavelength Gale smugglers. However, the heroes are not the only group looking for the mask. They must also contend with the Apex Society, led by Sith Scholar and a band of pirates. Though it is never ultimately concluded who took possession of the mask, what is known is what would happen if Force user or non-Force user alike would don the dangerous artifact. It is said that the mask was invested with the dark side of the Force, and that if an individual, even if they were not Force sensitive, was to don the mask, that being would be able to wield the Force as a Sith apprentice. If, however, a Jedi or Sith was to wear the mask, proficiency in additional Force powers always including, but not limited to, dark side powers were required. However, it was cautioned that the dark influence of the mask propelled the wearer towards acts of self-destruction in the pursuit of greater power, much like Nihilus, slowly etching away their humanity in lieu of an all-encompassing dark hunger. She did what with all your power you could not do. Our alliance is finished. I have no need of you.